All right, we're going to play a game. Okay. It's going to be things that have to do with the number eight. The number eight? Okay. And if you can't come up with one when it's your turn, uh, you have to drink a beverage. An alcoholic one? Sure. Great. All right. It's 10.30 in the morning, but that's all right. Yeah. Go. Octopus. Eight mile. That's a good one. Um, An Irish Cayley. Albert Bell. I'm out. Can I drink? (laughs) (laughs) This is the seven. (laughs) Great. (laughs) You should say this is the eight. This is the eight. You know, you know, you could have won that if you would have just said the eight. <laughs> it was just too obvious. I also just wanted a drink. <laughs> well, all right. Get, no, get no a beer. I really, actually, really don't want to drink right now. <laughs> well, we have currently have a issue here at 1851. Um, our lead writer uh, is expressing um, maybe a call for help because <laughs> she would like to drink alcohol before the start of this early in the morning. Okay, well, maybe if we film in the afternoon, these would be a lot more funny if I had a beer before we we recorded. That's true. All right, Bloody Mary's next week. (laughs) I'm holding you to that. All right, perfect. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna change this up. We'll be like Hoda. Oh yeah, uh, Kathy Lee and Hoda. Perfect. I think that's good. All right, go ahead. Kick us off. All right, fantastic. So there's obviously one brand that really stole the spotlight this week, Apple, with the announcement of the iPhone 10, which in my head I keep calling the iPhone X even though I know that that that's not what the name is. So um, it's going to be available for pre-order starting October 27th. It is a 5.8 inch screen that has glass on the front and the back. Um, And then I think what's kind of capturing all the headlines right now is the face ID technology that they're rolling out with it in terms of no longer having a home button and it's just gonna apparently know who you are in order to unlock it. So I'm intrigued to see how well that actually works. Uh, A few points. One, uh, Steve Beagleman, you still use a BlackBerry, so that news oh. is not uh, relevant to you. Uh, Sean Fitzgerald finally moved uh, from a yes. Samsung to an iPhone, so maybe that's that's mm-hmm. relevant to you. Um, and face recognition uh, for anybody that does inappropriate things on your cell phone, be, be careful because if that thing's recognizing your face, that thing's going to be taping a lot more. So those those cover ups of the of the camera are gonna become, that that's what you should invest in, the cover-ups of the camera. I just can see it going really wrong, but I hope that it's pretty cool. So can they. Great, Fran funny, and we're done. Yeah. <laughs> All right, on to our Fran Liberty now. Um, so this week we're featuring the man behind one of the top suppliers, which is a part of our main site issue on 1851, um, Easy Cert. So it was founded by Doug Groves, this week's Fran Liberty. Um, and it was established in order to fill a gap that comes with insurance compliance. So instead of franchisors being responsible for tracking down every one of their owners and making sure that they have all the right certificates, Easy Cert steps in and is able to maintain that connection with the franchisees, which I think kind of alleviates that pressure and ensures that people are complying with the insurance that they might need one day. Oh. Great. Two things. <laughs> Great. One, you did an awesome job on this suppliers issue, so way to go. Thank you. I love all the content that we're doing. I think we're telling Thanks. really good stories about suppliers who typically don't get uh, published um, mm-hmm. in franchise trade, so hopefully we're giving them some attention. And secondly, uh, Doug is an incredibly kind human being, mm-hmm. so even if you don't want to use his service, uh, it's worth having a relationship with him. So, good story. Thanks. On now to Frash Money. So obviously a way for a brand to drum up some buzz around it is to actually give away their fresh money, which may seem a little counterintuitive, but these giveaways um, kind of lend themselves to the climate right now with social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But Whataburger recently announced that they, thanks, what a great day. Promise of mimosas and $7. <laughs> 12. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> um, where was I? Whataburger, they're doing a giveaway on Snapchat. And so not only, Whoever wins is going to be able to donate $1,000 to a charity of their choice. A thousand, they get 1,000 taquitos, and then they get to take over a brand Snapchat account, Whataburger Snapchat account, which I think is kind of a risky but yet really cool idea because that takeover has become so popular that I think it's going to be an interesting way to see how they can work Snapchat into a giveaway. 
Yeah, brand, brands are starting to figure out a way to use low budget ideas to actually get a giant return. Because, I mean, obviously now we're talking about it. You're talking about a $1,000 to a charity, mm -hmm. a takeover. So you get someone to actually put out good content, not just go buy my burger all day. Right. Um, and you're giving away product, which clearly will get people trying product. So that cost, they're all in cost, is very little. Uh, the return is obviously significant because we're talking about it and others are talking about mm -hmm. it. Um, and it costs them nothing. So as you're thinking through social next year, you don't need giant budgets to have a huge uh, marketing effect. Uh, here's an example of a brand that's spending very little and getting a giant return. Good story. And now to the France, which I think that you might be familiar with, considering that you it's wrote like it. every week. This is great. I know. It's just <laughs> your dedication on the eight every week. I feel so. like there should be some image on the screen <laughs> of like, you know, like the blinking marquee lights that just says <laughs> Nick, Nick, Nick. Now I sound like Troy. Yeah, Troy, you really do. Troy, 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 Troy. Okay. So <laughs> we, um, you recently had a conversation with Sean Fitzgerald about the importance of franchisee validation, and you guys were kind of able to come up with some, some things that brands may not be doing when it comes to franchisee validation. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. All the marketing, all the franchise advertising, everything in the world to market your brand will be worth zero if your franchisees say, don't buy this thing. Um, so it was a great conversation Sean and I had that you really have to open up your eyes to what's happening internally because that's going to affect your marketing more than anything else. And uh, you can't put lipstick on a pig. Is that the same? I think that's right. I think so. Yeah. So it's the same with brands. If your franchisees are saying, you know, not, not a great investment, the marketing is not going to help you. You can spend all the money in the world. It won't. It won't change the fact that franchisees are saying don't buy this thing. So, uh, good conversation I had with Sean, and and that's kind of recapped in in the column this week. Check it out. Check and it out. Franching forward. Um, so there, it's not really easy, as we know, for an emerging brand to break into the industry. But Idolize Brows and Beauty, which is new to 1851, they just launched last week. So check out their page. Um, they officially just signed their first franchisee, and now they're looking to grow in the southeast. They have an, a presence in Virginia and um, North Carolina, but they are hoping to kind of saturate the east coast before they move west. I think it's a good strategy for a brand, and it'll be interesting to see how they're able to take this eyebrow threading concept and turn it into a more widespread trend. Yeah, category creators mm -hmm. uh, have a shot at creating uh, something awesome. Here's a group that's creating a new category, or owning a portion of the beauty category. Um, good stories. Uh, check them out. Now to the Fran Funny, I guess the second Fran Funny of this episode now. Uh, there's been more than two. I mean, I've, I've been <laughs> funny this whole time. I'm really not carrying my weight, so here we go. It's my time to You're shine. You're funny. All right, go ahead. Great. <clears throat> so this is um, a joke from Ellen DeGeneres after the iPhone 10 announcement, and honestly, it was the first thing that I thought of, so this really cracked me up. The glass is not only in the front, it's in the back, so now you can break both sides. It's for those of us who cracked the front and thought, I can do better. I literally break iPhones way too much to carry around a thousand dollar glass case all the time. Okay. <laughs> actually, that, that was actually pretty funny. I just wanted to do the Cassie okay, because whenever I say something that she just is like that, that was kind of weird. She goes, okay. So I was planning that the entire time. Just I didn't care what you said there. I was still going to go, okay. okay. But it's like an awkward pause. It's like, listen, dumb <laughs> Wait, I just swore again on the eight. Listen, dum dum. Dum dum. Dum dum. Uh, that that was not that that was not funny. And then she goes, "Okay." <laughs> really smooth with the transitions, as always. <laughs> now, See, now I'm, I'm Fran funny. <laughs> now on to the Franspiration. It's actually not a misquote this week. It's just straight up Franspiration from IFA President and CEO Robert Cassanti. IFA is also featured as one of our suppliers. Um, he said, "It's up to all of us to be advocates for this industry. It's not the Republican way or the Democratic way. It's the American way." Which I thought was just a lovely sentiment. Sounds like a hat. <laughs> it could be a hat. Now Fran for, funny number five. We should start like a tally in the corner every <laughs> time. <laughs> now for Franemies versus Frans. Um, so there have been a lot of Frans that have been coming forward after the devastation that was um, left by Hurricanes Irma and Harvey. Um, so from restaurants donating food to environmental services companies that have been coming out to kind of put their experts in the field. Um, there's another brand, Lightbridge Academy, which um, is donating 2,000 eye care backpacks. So their staff members, parents, students um, are coming together to fill them with school supplies and encouraging letters and, um, you know, care and comfort items to kind of help them out. And I think that this whole thing has just been a great demonstration of, of what you can do when people are organizing these type of campaigns. Lots of brands giving back. Uh, that's how our 
country is supposed to work. Mm -hmm. When there's devastation, we all come together. So yep. lots of good stories out there of brands uh, stepping up. No Fran Funny there. No Fran Funny. That's the eight. That's eight. <laughs>